Happy October, everyone. This is Pam with Women of Consciousness, just checking in and giving an update to start with. Um, it's definitely been a minute since Natalie and I have been able to uh, connect and go live together. We have spent the last few weeks just in our own kind of transitions and new beginnings and the business of women of consciousness has just kind of had to take um, a moment of stillness, I, I would say, as we have just navigated our life transitions. Uh, so as Natalie had talked about um, in her, in, in a couple of our last episodes, um, she had started her PhD program and was, you know, settling into her move and her new community and really expanding on that part of her life. She is not with me this morning. I am solo, so I'm not going to go too much into her stuff. Um, but I just wanted to reflect on what was already kind of put out there. Uh, as for me, <laughs> wow, it's just definitely been a crazy couple of months. <laughs> I would say the summer was amazing and fast paced and very much um, friendship and activities and adventures. And then um, August hit with some intense energies. And I think I have just been settling back into normal life um, now that school has started. Um, I, I work in public school systems and I have kids in school and everything. So it's been definitely a transition back to, I guess, reality. Um, and then looking at some of the crazy energies <laughs> that have kind of come with the autumn equinox and the eclipse season of September and where we are right now. Um, tomorrow is October 2nd and we will be closing out finally the past 18 months of Libra and Aries eclipse energy. So if you look back at the past 18 months of your life, um, you might see where friendships and business partners and even romantic interests, people have maybe come and gone. And it's been a lot of divine connections and things that are, are destined with eclipses. It's all about our destiny and our fate and our path, you know, suddenly shifting um, below our feet without even us recognizing what's happening. And in September, right around the equinox, Pisces, um, kind of opened up for the next 18 months uh, of where we're going into Pisces Virgo kind of energy. And with that, it also closes out a decade and, and brings, you know, bigger hindsight, I guess, to view uh, of the past decade of our personal lives as our collective lives, as we have navigated these eclipse pairs. Um, so it's been pretty intense. It definitely impacts, you know, sleep and if, whether you are getting good sleep or not. And I, um, I always struggle with that, with the eclipses. So I'm always kind of feeling a little more tired, um, a little more drained personally. So that just makes it harder when you already feel so much productivity throughout the day and so much responsibilities. And then you just kind of feel drained. So it, it's really hard I think sometimes to tap into like our hobbies and our passions, they kind of get put on the back burner when you just feel the weight uh, of everything you're supposed to be doing and need to do. And so it's really about, I think, prioritizing. Um, but <laughs> here we are now and it's a new month. Um, September was a lot of closures. It's, it's a nine month and um, for anyone who follows numerology or knows anything about that, nine is a vibrational frequency of endings. And here with, you know, October, we have the one coming in with some new beginnings. Um, and also really think about the seasons and, and kind of internally. And again, you know, what we're doing on our personal lives 
if you are in tune with the seasons and you recognize that the summer was a lot of growth, right? Gardens are at full bloom. Um, we have maximum daylight where we're connecting with the power of the sun and the light consciousness. And now here we are, we've reached the harvest and, you know, we can feel death. There's a death and a life kind of imbalance in this equilibrium that's, you know, coexisting simultaneously right now. And so things are slowing down, you know, maybe we're not feeling as so productive, right? Those internal garden spaces are kind of being really weeded and harvested out. And so it really is a time for rest and reflection and looking back at, you know, the spring, uh, what seeds we planted, what, what intentions did we set for our lives? What were we making for goals and transitions? And, and now some of those things, you know, they may be closing out. We may be reaping the rewards of the goals that we set. And as we move forward and prepare for winter, there's that, you know, hibernation, that scarcity. And so seeing that externally and feeling that reflected internally is a natural state. Um, when we kind of find a lot, moments of stillness and allow ourselves to get out of thinking we always have to be going and moving and doing and acting, and we recognize that there's a need for and a space um, to create for rest and stillness and quiet and solitude, and that they're all just as equally important as creating and producing, um, it brings its own internal balance. And so I think women of consciousness in a lot of ways through Natalie and I and our experiences, it just is reflecting our internal and external states. And sometimes it's just okay and it's fine to take a step back and, and, and really reassess, you know, what, what is it I've created? What were my intentions and where did my subconscious really pull me out of alignment or maybe move me more into alignment with, with those intentions that I've set. And so for anyone who's listening um, to this episode, who has followed us and listened to other ones in the past year, since we created this LLC together, we, we've really been open and honest about our journey what brought us together, where we're at in the current moment as we navigate shifts and challenges and creativity. And so it's been a beautiful year and I am absolutely filled with so much love and gratitude and blessings for that. And then there's been this little bit of sadness because our lives, you know, have, have shifted based on our goals. And we knew, we knew this was coming. We knew it would be a part of it and we would um, shift and, and flow with, with the state naturally. And so taking a break for a minute, I have definitely been pondering, um, you know, what is women of consciousness? We, we've built a really good structure in the past year. Um, we're, we're built on four pillars that we like to consider, um, <laughs> coaching, facilitating, educating, and consulting. And we really looked at each of those areas, those pillars individually. And, and like I said, we built that structure and now it feels like this integration, um, because they're all entwined really, like they all overlap and relate to each other. So now it's just how, how do we move forward with this integrative, integrative web uh, of what we've created and really truly like, what is our goal, you know, besides our, our passion and our purpose and feeling this alignment that brought us together there, there's a deeper dance um, by the cosmic <laughs> frequencies happening. And so again, it's just trying to recognize that, be in gratitude of that, and really be authentic and, and honor that. Um, 
And so one thing I've loved about what Natalie and I have created over the past year, nothing has ever been forced or fake. Um, we've been very vulnerable and open and honest and authentic, um, sharing personal stories and experiences. And, and at the end of the day, like the goal has always been the same. The intention has always been the same and it's to help other people. Um, we're both educators. We, we love to learn. We're always, you know, students of the world and the cosmos. And then we're always, you know, trying to teach and, and give that back to others. And the podcast really w was one way that that um, manifested, you know, how can I give back some of this wisdom that I have gained in my lifetime? And again, I feel pride and I honor this podcast and I, I've missed doing the episodes with her um, this past month. And I've thought about hopping on here a few times and ironically, it kind of brought up some blocks for me um, that I then went and sat and, and worked through and navigated. Um, I know I had a sacral chakra block for sure around creativity. And, and so like the healing journey and the journey of evolving our own, you know, selves, our own consciousness, it, it never ends. It's always, always there at every moment of the day. I think it just depends on how attuned we are to our internal state and what's really happening for a bigger purpose. And then that's always reflected externally as within, so without, as above, so below, as they say. Um, so for me, I have definitely had to navigate a lot. Um, I think after the Pisces eclipse, I was feeling a lot of overwhelm. Um, I just, my shoulders, oh man, you know when your shoulders just carry it all <laughs> and you feel like you have the weight of the world on you? That was definitely where I was at. I was having a lot of shoulder and neck pain and just really, really hurting from the tension in my body that I was carrying. And when I go and work freelance doing oracle readings um, and chakra energy healing out of a local metaphysical store, I always have like my supplies you know, that I bring with me, my resources that I use in that space. But then I always have like another bag, right? I have my lunch. I have um, my my projects to keep me busy in the downtime. So I always have like a backpack and a canvas bag. And I remember going in one day and complaining to um, the woman who works in the store Um that I was just annoyed. I was annoyed and frustrated that I had to keep carrying these bags. And I was doing it to myself, right? I'm the one who's packing up for my day and deciding what to carry out into the world with me that I need. But the weight of it was just hurting my body on top of the already tension. And so I just felt extremely frustrated and annoyed. And you know, I know there was deeper reasons to that for sure. I mean, it's kind of silly and egoic to think about just being annoyed that you're carrying a heavy bag. <laughs> um, and then I reached a moment of extreme overwhelm um, within a couple of days because my oldest son, who's 21, had a car accident. Um, somebody ran a red light and smashed into the front of his car as he was going through the green intersection that he had and um, it totaled, totaled his car out. So as a parent, to get a phone call at night, you know, from police or from your child in, in fear and in pain, it's every person's like worst nightmare, every parent, you know, um, not what you want to get. And so that, that was it, you know, spending a night not knowing what was happening with my son, knowing he was being taken to intensive care, um, awaiting all of these results. And then when he did come home, he had a concussion. And um, we just spent the following week, I think our relationship got closer. And I really kind of stepped up into mama bear mode <laughs> and 
was his advocate for him and was getting everything um, dealt with for him and helping him in his own process. And so for me personally, like that was just, I couldn't handle anymore. And it was like that breaking point, right? The volcano within just kind of erupted. And I ended up (laughs) being pulled inward into the deepest, darkest part of my own psyche um, that I feel I've really, truly explored in a very long time. And it took me, it took me into very dark places. And on the one hand, after going through, you know, your child having an accident and being grateful that they're okay, um, there's all of that like insight about what truly matters, right? I think sometimes we get into arguments with people, um, especially parent-child bonds, you know, um, and like the material things, you know, cleaning the house and wanting more help and, and all of those things that were kind of leading to overwhelm. Like at the end of the day, it was just this recognition that none of that really matters. Um, It allowed me to drop a lot of that internal baggage that I think I was carrying, right? The weight of the world. Um, I don't need to carry all the weight. It's not all of my problem. And so it was really good because I felt a release from that. But on the other hand, there was this dark kind of feminine, right? I I mean, I was going into archetypal, this mother goddess, um, wild woman archetype, dark energy. And at the same time, you know, other people are having their life experiences. There's that ripple effect and that quantum entanglement. Um, So I was, you know, feeling involved and connected and then having my own stuff to go through and knowing how, again, that reflected to other people. Um, So I felt like I really needed to cut cords and I isolated for definitely a good couple days. I went through contacts and Facebook friends again. This is probably my third cycle just since June. And I, I deleted, I just deleted people out. Um, you know, and, and honestly, like I have an aunt who, who won't even speak to me and it's been pretty painful. Um, and I don't understand why, like, I don't do anything. It's all her own assumptions. She she thought like I was trying to avoid visiting her years ago when she came to the state I live in, um, which wasn't true. I was sick. Um, So it's just kind of stupid nonsense things that could be really cleared up with one small conversation. But instead, it was like this feeling of just not being liked anymore. (laughs) But as a child, this woman that was like my favorite, you know, aunt. um, And so in that moment of darkness, she was one of the people that I just cut out and I was, you know, just let it go. And um And I needed that darkness. I needed that moment of, I don't give a F. (laughs) Um, I'm going to do what's right for me, by me, and for me to finally cut the cord. Because if I hurt her feelings in the process, like, again, a conversation could clear all of this up. Um, So it's been a lot. It's been a lot of energies of, I think, letting go really, truly um, letting go of of things that we hold on to, people, you know, people especially that we hold on to, attachments, um, you know, and, and that's not always for the positive at all. We, we sometimes get caught up in other people once they enter our lives that we're not really sure, like, how, how will we manage without them or you know, no one's going to fill the role quite like you do. Um, And then we get these signs from the universe externally and internally, and we just know, we know it's time to walk away and say goodbye. But the ego and the fear and our wounds or whatever just kind of makes that harder to do. 
And so in that moment of darkness that I felt, um, and it's, it's just in some ways, Callie, right? Callie, the destroyer and the creator, like I will cut all the cords and burn the world to the ground and I will recreate my universe. And, um, and I would say that's what the eclipse season and the equinox energy had really personally brought for me. And I think collectively on, on different levels, um, cause I don't want to assume, and I don't want to say this is everybody's experience, but just looking at the energies of, um, astrological alignments and, you know, numerology. And, and like I said, September being a month of endings. Um, I think this is what was just asked for us. And when you look back at the seasons and the cycles of the past, I mean, it, it repeats, right? There comes a point, I think every autumn where we have to kind of let go and, and prepare to move into scarcity, the darkness that is coming. Um, and so as I navigated, I would say what was this newfound people pleaser um, wound that I never really ever would have considered myself a people pleaser. But um, I think it was about being nice and, and and not trying to cause conflict with people, just trying to, you know, if you're nice, everybody likes a nice person. But the minute you're bitchy, you know, like, ooh, people have stuff to say about you there. Um, and so that was what I had found in the depths of my psyche and embracing this dark, wild woman energy, um, truly allowed me to reclaim pieces of my soul that were very much fragmented into these primordial depths. Um, and I struggled, I struggled in the integration process and it was like I was fighting myself, the Jekyll and Hyde aspect, right? My light and my dark. Um, <laughs> if I can cut cords and cut people out so easily and and just walk away from situations that mean so much to me. Um, and if I can learn to put up better boundaries and really, truly speak my truth with a harsher tongue, you know, where's where is that going to get me? Um, and I think I was kind of afraid, afraid to maybe lose more people and lose more connections and friendships and maybe alienate people. Um, but that's not healthy. That's not healthy. It's not good. I'm giving away my power. I'm not being true to myself. Um, and, and so... I struggled. Um, I remember laying in bed in the middle of the night, having a hard time sleeping and everything was just so black and so dark. And I, I truly feel like I had just sunk into the internal depths and, and I didn't want to reclaim that piece of soul. I didn't want to reclaim that identity. I didn't know how to bring it up and integrate it and, and still be my authentic self and still be true to me and true to other people. Because the truth is, like, I'm not trying to hurt people. I'm really not. I, and that's the paradox. That's the, <laughs> that's the hard part of having a, a healthy, balanced, open throat chakra, because you're not saying things to be hurtful and mean and spiteful and vengeance. Um, it's just speaking your truth from your heart because it's what you need for you. And you know that it hurts people because they love you or they care about you or they care what you think. And so you're your truth can, it does hurt, you know, sometimes other people. And so while I really try to, with intention, um, to be careful of my words and what I say, you know, sometimes anger comes up and then we just are careless and reckless with our words. Um, and, and then we can be really deeply honest and, and maybe a little bit too much where we tip the scales, right? Because we've held back for so long. And so 
I struggled to integrate that that night in the middle of the night. And it took me a couple of days to have this realization that it was the persona um, that that was trying to integrate like the, the mask that we wear, right? This persona. I've worked really, really hard in the past um, to uncondition myself from culture and people and things that I were told and to believe, you know, even the lies that I told myself and conditioned myself to believe. Um, I worked really hard to strip all that away. I worked really hard to rewire the neurological, right? The neuroplasticity of the brain because it's created to already expand and, and look at negativity. It grows <laughs> and learns through negative experiences, right? By seeing everything you don't want, it helps to shift you into what you do want. Um, and then the nervous system, right? Depending on our freeze, fight or flight modes and, and how we have dealt with, you know, things since the childhood experiences that brought us into adulthood um, and learning to rewire that. And so I felt with the more healing I've done intentionally, I have been able to be very authentic and open and vulnerable. Um, but it was just a different experience. It was a different level of healing and conscious integration and expansion of psyche. And, and it's definitely has stayed with me. Um, I mean, it is fresh, obviously, over the past couple of weeks. But it's just been definitely um, eye opening for myself. And, and and again, like knowing it's okay. It's okay to speak my truth and stand my ground and have really firm boundaries that protect me and let people know like my expectations of them, what I'm willing to accept of them, as well as what I'm willing, you know, to kind of put out there for my own boundaries. And I will definitely admit there has absolutely been times in the past where I had very weak boundaries. Um, if I even had a boundary at all, my God, like, who am I kidding? Right. I had so much trauma, um, that I had to overcome and my ex-husband was very controlling as well. So when you don't even feel like you have a sense of control over your own autonomy, that someone else is in charge of your life. And I'm talking like teenage years into my early 20s, as I was trying to, you know, those are the moments when you're finding sense of self and identity. And when you have someone else in control of that, um, and you only see yourself as a mother and a wife and an employee, um, it's, it's really, it, it, it's really wounding to the psyche and to the ego in my own experience. And so it's definitely been a lot and, and I've just needed a break. I've needed a break from the podcast. I've needed a break from what am I creating next? What am I creating next? What content are we going to put out? Like what, what next retreat are we going to do? What's our next topic on this? Um, it's just all, it's too freaking much. <laughs> and and the stillness and the quiet has felt good. But I think I am now at a point post-integration of self. And like, I don't want to let go of this. I don't want to walk away from this. This is my business. And, you know, even if my partner is busy and has other um, responsibilities that are very time-consuming, it's beneficial. It's beneficial for her. It's beneficial for our business. Um, it's beneficial for our partnership. And so I'm really, really, truly happy um, for where Natalie is at right now. And I know that when she is ready to come back into, you know, the content making arena <laughs> with me, 
Um, it's going to be full speed ahead. We're going to have, you know, direction locked in. We're going to feel an alignment because every shift that we have taken has been a part of our personal narrative. Um, and I really, truly believe when you tap into your myth story, when you start seeing yourself as the main character in your life and you start recognizing that there's roles, that everybody is filling a role, that they're supporting characters, that challenges are coming because it's meant to help you grow and evolve. Um, it's meant to help you see a bigger picture um, it's meant to help you find lost pieces of your own soul, um, whether it's through boundary setting or personal empowerment and confidence and self-worth and self-love and forgiveness and care and compassion. You know, there, there's something bigger that plays out than just waking up with the sun, doing what you're supposed to, finding ways to unwind with the sunset and then just going to bed and doing it all the next day. Um, there, there really is a bigger dance, cosmic dance happening. And we are co-creators with our soul, with the universe around us. We are in a harmonious, harmonious partnership. And when the ego thinks it has all the say and all the control, um, it sets us up for, for failure and downfall and struggle. And I think right now, the eclipses, especially um, closing out, like I said, 18 months of Libra and Aries, and looking at that passion and aggression, and balance and partnership um, on all levels, because everything is truly a partnership um, relationship, you know, even ourselves, we have a relationship with ourselves, with, with the content that we put into our mind, um, with the chemicals and the food and all of these things that we're consuming day in and day out. We are in relationship with ourselves. And, um, and so a lot of closures, um, a lot of alignments that have shifted and and it's been really, truly beautiful. And so now it's just figuring out, again, that bigger cycle of Pisces and Venus um, coming in, not Venus, uh, Pisces and Virgo. Although Pisces is Aphrodite, so it, there's some Venus energy still playing out there. Um, but I, I feel it's just, it's getting more intense because like we need to listen. <laughs> And, and that's what it takes sometimes, right? To feel the weight of the world on your shoulders and this internal struggle of, I can't carry on this way anymore. I cannot live like this. I cannot keep doing the same cycles and patterns that are truly causing my own suffering. We can look externally and try and blame other people and blame external you know, circumstances, but that's truly the universe, you know, navigating through a dance to get your awareness and attention and, and to get you to reflect inward. And so I think I would just kind of give advice that look at the level of intensity <laughs> of what's happening internally and externally, you know, if it's calm, then that's awesome. That's beautiful. You know, sometimes it's the quiet before the storm um, or it's the calm after the storm. And then, you know, sometimes we're just caught up in the eye of the storm. Um, and, and, you know, it's meant to shift. It's meant to bring about change. It's meant to bring about destruction. Um, because from destruction, we can choose to recreate. And so I know in the United States, um, in the past week, there's been a lot of um, destruction based on Mother Nature. Um, Hurricane Helene in the South has wreaked havoc and devastation. But I think 
there's also a lot of beauty in that. There really is because it brings people together. Again, it reminds us of what truly, truly matters. And it's not the surface level materialism. Um, It brings us deeper into our heart and our soul and recognizing that life, human life and animal life, um, this gift of nature, it's all truly precious and temporary. We are given the gift of a body to experience all of the highs and the lows. You know, we're swinging on the pendulum all through different spectrums of vibrational frequencies. And, and that's what it, it's supposed to be on Earth. Um, that's what this planet, Gaia's consciousness, um, is for. It's for us to learn and grow and evolve. And, um, and so I would say we need to move beyond any victim narratives, any, you know, anything that takes away our self empowerment and makes us feel, um, like nothing but tragedy and loss. Um, I think we have to kind of look at the beauty and, and look ahead at the bigger picture. Um, because everything can be recreated, even the structures <laughs> that we're living in are, are collapsing slowly. And we're seeing the cracks in the foundations. And we have addressed those in lots of our past um, episodes. And so I feel like the hurricane, um, Mother Nature and her wild, fierce force, it's not something to be feared. And when we look within ourselves, we have those hurricane forces within. We have the volcano erupting within. We are a force of nature internally. And there's beauty in that. It's And so that's what I (laughs) have kind of been working through and integrating and and really am at in my life that I think it... um, is kind of inspiring me to just hop on here, go live and just reconnect. Um, I don't need to isolate and sit in stillness and, and try and figure it all out. Navigating the unknown is part of the wild woman archetype. Um, that dark moon energy. We're not meant to know it all. We're not meant to have the answers. It, through the darkness, as we wander, we'll find clarity. The whole purpose is to surrender and let go and trust, to know that we're provided for and that we are protected and that we will navigate the darkness and we will get through to the other side um, in, into the light, right? It's always darkest before the dawn, but a new day will come, that rebirth is waiting. And that's when we get to level up internally, taking all of the past experiences and culminating like truly what we learned and embodying that wisdom and implying that wisdom. And that's where we really truly break the cycles and the patterns um, that we create for ourselves. And in the past, I've talked about symbolism, um, especially of the phoenix and the snake. And I think that is just such a powerful reminder right now as we're kind of facing endings and new beginnings. If you are feeling like I've gone through this before <laughs> and here it is happening again, this deja vu rebirth you know, cycle of the Phoenix, I would really truly say, take some time with it and look at the theme, look at what you did learn and maybe what you haven't learned um, because it's coming back and it's going to keep coming back until you are able to recognize it internally go through the process that you need to go through um, to reclaim 
you know, the shadows, the deep part of the unconscious psyche that we ignore, deny, repress. Um, you know, it's not even only individual levels, but there's collective levels. There is that whole ancestral bloodline levels. So, so there's always aspects that you don't know are there. Um, never mind the karma that could be coming with the cycle as well. And so if it feels like I've been through this path before and here it is starting up again, here it is, this deja vu, this cycle once more, then there's something you're not quite learning. There's something you're not putting into action, whether it's your own, um, you know, internal kind of healing where you're able to clear away past wounds. And again, this is where I definitely go to the chakras, um, our energy bodies. And then as well as just the external, you know, like making different choices. Stop doing the same thing because you're going to keep getting the same results. And a way to be able to tell is through the symbolism of the snake because the snake sheds its skin all at once. Um, I actually heard something I think it was like a guided meditation I was listening to, and um, the instructor was talking about the snake wedging its head in between rocks so that it can just rip its skin off all in one swift movement. It doesn't do it like piece by piece. It, it holds itself down and just tears it off and is completely um, reborn in that instance where now it's growth. You're not going back. You're not repeating past cycles and patterns because you've shed it. You've shed it with the deadness of your skin. Here, you're able um, to go on and, and grow and evolve. You get new people. You get new lessons. You get new opportunities and new experiences. And it can feel intimidating and vulnerable um, almost like the inner, inner child or the maiden, um, for me as the feminine kind of energy, I work with the maiden, the mother and the crone. Um, so you can feel elements of all three of them within you. And so there's can be a depth of naiveness and, and uncertainty, you know, it's the fool in tarot, um, starting the journey all new again. And so I would say looking to that symbolism right now, as we're kind of in this process of death and rebirth, as new cycles or old cycles start to occur. And, um, and, and yeah, like at the end of the day, I truly just feel like we got to do the work for ourselves. You know, people are going to come and go. We're going to align. There, there's again that destiny, which the eclipses do bring us, you know, fate and destiny. And so work through the loss and the pain, work through, you know, the happiness and the pleasure and the joys. Work, you know, just don't um don't take it at face value go a little bit deeper into your own like internal iceberg of the consciousness and and really get below the surface deep down into those dark waters and you know chip away chip away and see what comes up and then if you need help always seek help for sure um because this can be hard it can bring about existential crisis it can bring about dark night of the soul and in those states of death, it can actually really, truly bring about suicidal ide ideation, um, you know, fantasizing. Just it can get so overwhelming that the idea of having to repeat this cycle and to carry on this journey and do it anymore can be so overbearing that, you know, sometimes the suicidal, like, uh, you know, ending things, it, it seems like the only way. Um, and I definitely have resonated more with that energy in the past decade since my 
spiritual awakening or whatever, um, since this path has unfolded, the more of these death cycles I have felt internally, um, it absolutely brought chaos to my mind. Um, because sometimes it's been so, so, so painful. I just don't want to suffer. I don't want to go through it anymore. Um, but I know that that's my soul. That's my ego. That's all this internal levels and layers. That's really just trying to get me to shed, um, the life that I've created because a lot of what I created was from a really wounded space, um, inner child wounds. And, and it kind of formulated my life. Um, I've been honest in other episodes, you know, I had my, my oldest child, my daughter, um, when I was 16 years old. And so like, so, you know, being a a teen mom, (laughs) There's a lot of stuff there. There was a lot of growth that was stunted and not able to happen. Um, And then there was other areas of growth that happened overnight that I wasn't prepared for. And so everything is our own journey, um, our own life, you know, our, our myth, our myth story. It's what makes us. And so if you can work with your myth story and if you can recognize that, you know, the equinox and the eclipses are really bringing intense energy of change, of letting go, of surrender, um, that it's all truly for the best. You're shedding skin, skin you no longer need because you've outgrown it. And there's all the unknown and it's vulnerable and it's scary and it can feel really lonely Um, but that in itself is a cycle and a pattern that plays out and you start to see it more and more and it gets less scary and it gets less confusing. And in my own, I would say in my own (laughs) experience of it, I've come to be really grateful, um, to see a rebirth happening and a death state happening and to say, okay, like, I don't have to fight it. It doesn't have to be painful. What do I really truly need to let go of? And we know it, whether it's a job that we we have no heart and soul or passion for, and it's toxic environment. Um, but, but we're afraid to let go because the money is good, right? And we need the money. <laughs> That's going to be like the survival instincts kicking in, holding us captive. Um, or relationships, you know, I, I stayed in that marriage way too long because I was a child and I had so much fear of the unknown and I didn't know what it would look like. And I didn't know how to get out and I, all of these things. And you know what happened? Like I just died. I died inside, um, for, for years. I would say two or three years at the end. And in that moment of, okay, I accept death. I truly accept and embrace death. If that's what has to happen to get out of this relationship, then so be it. And and it truly manifested that way because he, he held me hostage at gunpoint <laughs> for, you know, a, an ordeal of a whole 24 hour ordeal before I was able to free and get to the police. Um, but that is something that I've healed from and moved past and I can share it openly and honestly, um, because I know there are other people in relationships out there that are suffering because they don't know how to get out because they don't know what's to come. And so fear just holds them. Um, Or we give our power away to our partners and think that we just should suffer at the hands of our partners um, because that's what love is or that's what relationships are. And it's not it's not the truth at all. That's what we were conditioned to believe. 
um, that's toxicity, that's, you know, the past, when you look at the past <laughs> of the patriarchy and, and whatnot, and, and how women have um, had to deal with rules that they were kind of forced into, you know, and that we've been breaking free of for the past, you know, decades. Um, and it goes both ways. I'm not trying to be sexist at all because, you know, I, I know women are manipulative just as well and men feel just as hostage um, to relationships. So it doesn't matter gender or not. Um, it's the point that it's time. The universe is just speeding up and accelerating and getting more intense internally and externally because we have to move past these narratives. We have to do the work and sit in stillness and maybe isolate and, and put ourselves as a priority. And we have to look at our mind and the stories we're telling ourselves about ourselves and about other people. And we really need to look at our nervous system and heal it and, and really find, um, calmness and stillness and self-regulation. And so at the end of the day, like that's what women of consciousness had set out with the intention of doing, um, to share our own personal stories and experiences and our own educational backgrounds to help others, to, to be a safe space, to share stories and to hold ourselves accountable and to just move forward. And I mean that as a collective, you know, like truly as a collective humanity, we're all on different vibrational frequencies. Um, you know, that when you look at countries alone, right, you have third world countries and then you have countries that are more advanced, you know, that kind of shows where we're at individually too. And so it's just time. It's time to ascend. It's time to heal the old narratives, integrate the shadow aspects of the psyche and, um, and elevate. And so I'm excited to really think about, you know, what's coming, where I'm going on my own life, where Natalie is going on her journey, and then where that's going to bring us together and how we're going to be able to continue to give back um, through narratives and sharing our story. And then again, creating the content, the workshops, the um, facilitating, you know, th these group environments. We've been doing a monthly goddess circle since April and it's virtual online and we've been doing it for free for women. And we've really focused on self-care and sexual healing um, of the sexual energies and um, kind of bringing back this feeling of, of sisterhood, which Natalie and I have felt has really been disassembled and, um, and shattered <laughs> by the kind of collective structure that has played out over, you know, decades or possibly even centuries um, and really trying to honor the feminine archetypes, right? We've talked about the warrior archetype in previous episodes. Um, that's why I mentioned the wild woman. Um, Artemis for me is definitely this beautiful wild woman archetype that is so dominant of, of my psyche. Um, so I think we all are in a state of reclaiming our wild, <laughs> wild man or wild woman self. Um, and that's just kind of what I feel like autumn and the eclipse season is bringing to us as a collective. We can't, we just simply can't keep staying stuck in comfort zones that are becoming discomforting. If you're in a comfort zone and you're just starting to recognize all it's doing is causing you more pain and suffering, then firstly, know you're not alone. 
you're definitely not alone. And secondly, you just have to love yourself enough and put yourself first to, to work through it and break out of that comfort zone, embrace the vulnerability, surrender, cut the cords, you know, look at where you're giving your energy and who's taking your energy and where it's draining and exhausting and just set boundaries for yourself and put yourself first. Um, because we, we're meant to grow and evolve and like the cycles and the seasons change is meant to come, you know, we're meant to embrace it. And the easier that we can do that, the easier the journey becomes for us, the path uh, that we're walking on. It, um, it doesn't feel so painful. It feels more beautiful and in alignment. But it definitely takes time. And so that's why I think the 10 years, the eclipse season, for me personally, this 10-year decade, um, it really closes out where I had found myself subconsciously creating a life from a wounded teenage girl that at 15 years old, you know, kind of got manipulated by a 21-year-old man and then lied to myself and and ran from the fear, you know, and it, walking away from the relationship became fearful. And so I stayed and spent 17 years, you know, with that man. And we had four, we have four children together. And, um, but it, almost in the end cost me my life, literally and, and figuratively. That's what it took. It took me willing to actually die externally because I was already dead internally to be able to break out of that life cycle that I subconsciously created from my wounds. And so now I'm sitting here 10 years later, the most amazing, <laughs> best version of myself. Um, so proud, so damn proud of who I am. You know, I, I can admit I've made mistakes and I've hurt people. And, you know, I hurt myself more than anyone or anything. And I take accountability for that. And, um, but in this moment of rebirth, I have all of this wisdom and I have all of this lived experience and I know better and I won't fall back. I won't repeat the patterns and the cycles. And that's why I've had to walk away from people or let them go. Um, and now I leave it up to fate. I leave it up to destiny, knowing that what's meant for me will always come to me. I. I can look at a part of my life and see the people that were around me from my wounded version. And now I can look at my life and see the people that are in alignment from this healthy, healed, boundary setting, self-loving person that I have grown into. This maiden mother crone of integration um, of all these beautiful archetypes of Lilith and Artemis and Aphrodite and, oh man, Gaia and Kali, all of this divine feminine that internally is me, that reflects in my persona. And I'm just grateful. I'm I'm just so grateful, you know, like through all the pain and the suffering I've gone through, I can forgive and let go and release and whether it's others or myself. And in this very moment, as I even say these words, I think I'm truly, truly feeling it because um, I've been rambling for an hour <laughs> from the depths um, I had no idea what I was going to say. Honestly, I didn't 
know where this was going to take me. But here it is, right, into these deeper levels and layers of my psyche. And I feel a new beginning. And, I, and I'm grateful. And from that, I'm going to stand firm in my boundaries because I know what happens when I don't. I know the people that it lets in, the gaslighting narcissist who want to attack the empath. Um, I know that I have discovered so much creativity when I used to think I had nothing. I know I've discovered so much wisdom to share when I thought I had nothing to give. And so this Women of Consciousness, this LLC, this podcast, what we've created, it was always in the foundation um, of legacy, the word our legacy. And it wasn't meant to be done overnight. It wasn't meant to, you know, pop up and be like, oh, look how successful we are. <laughs> because the truth is, you know, how we all view success is different. And if you're viewing success based solely on monetary value, um, then I would say you're missing a lot. You're missing a lot out there about abundance and success because the fact that I could go through the life choices I made and the traumas that happened to me, um, and become the person I am today, like to me, that's success. I don't need money. <laughs> like I don't, I have this beautiful relationship with myself and this beautiful sense of love for self that I once 10, 20 years ago, never had. And I'm grateful, I'm grateful for that. And I owe it to the universe. I owe it to the seasons, the equinoxes and the solstices. I owe it to the solar eclipses that have come in pairs, um, 18 months of these gateways and these portals and, and now closing out a decade. And so with that, I just, I say goodbye. I just say goodbye to the past and I say thank you. And with the eclipse tomorrow, I'm so grateful for the partnerships, the Libra, you know, the energy of partnerships and whether they were romantic or business or friendship or work, every single person taught me something. Every single person taught me how to open my heart or protect my heart how to really listen to my intuition and trust myself and how to really truly embrace love and give and receive love with boundaries. And for that, I'm so grateful. And with Libra, again, with the balancing within, I would say the masculine and the feminine, all of those internal archetypes and energies and finding, you know, there, we've done so many podcast episodes on the masculine and the feminine and the wounded and the healed versions and the internal and the external. So I'm not going to reiterate that now. I would just say maybe go back and find one of those episodes that you're maybe drawn to and explore it. But looking at balance um, internally and externally, looking at how you are balancing your own fragmented and then integrated aspects of psyche and self and ego and how that is creating your life with you and for you. Because if you're not setting intentions, if you're just waking up and you're blindingly <laughs> kind of going through the day doing the same routine in and out, and you're just kind of distracting yourself or avoiding challenges and situations because they bring pain and discomfort, 
I would say you're doing yourself a dishonor and a disservice. You're keeping yourself stuck. And the best thing that you can truly do for yourself is to love yourself. Love yourself enough that you see that you are worthy of healing and growing and releasing your narratives and finding and creating new narratives based on who you are now in this moment. Because our past doesn't define us. You know, these moments don't always define us. Um, we have that choice. We have that choice to say who we are and what we want to create and what legacy we want to leave behind. And if it's happening out of fear or pain or panic or others control over us, then there's work to be done there. There's always work to be done. Every moment of every day is an opportunity to sit in stillness and reflect on who you are and what you're creating for your life. Um, yeah, kind of got emotional there for a minute, but I didn't cry. And that's how I know I'm healing because so many moments that would have brought me to my knees and made me cry. I no longer cry. There's a strength there. There is a sense of self and pride there. Um, and it's not emotional vulnerability. Um, so I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for the people that have been supporting Natalie and I and women of consciousness. Um, the people that keep showing up for us to the goddess circles that we host each month. Um, you can go to our website and go to the facilitation page and, you know, get on the email list. If you'd like to check that out in the future, the topics are always changing and they're always close to, you know, our hearts and kind of what we're going through in the moment. Um, but I'm just, I'm just super grateful for this aspect of me that is women of consciousness and what we're creating and where we're going. And so there's been a month of silence from us, but it's not over. We're not going away. We're just shifting our, our process. We're just shifting in our life um, paths. And there's bigger narratives that are playing out for us right now that need our time and attention. But this business is our baby. Um, it is our creation. It is our blood, sweat, and tears, our joy, and our challenges, um, our sadness, our struggles, and our celebrations. Um, we do not approach it like a normal business. We bring in the spiritual aspect. There are times when we consult the oracle cards on our next moves or or what the business is trying to tell us. Um, so the business itself is a living entity with its own purpose. And Natalie and I are just trying to listen to its message and follow its voice and hear the calling. And right now it's in a phase of stillness and silence. And that's so beautiful because from that, there's gonna be a beautiful rebirth. There's going to be more content created. There's going to be more alignment with our messages and our passions and our purpose. So thank you. Just thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening and tuning in and supporting. Um, you know, and I think I'm just going to close with a card. I'm going to pull from the wild unknown tarot. Because why not? It goes perfect. So looking at tomorrow's eclipse in Libra, so solar eclipse, what does, oh, there we go. We're looking at the Father of Cups. So that would be the King of Cups in the original tarot, that divine kind of masculine energy when he's able to reach, right, the King, the Father state. So that maturity of the masculine emotional energy. So maybe even embracing more of the masculine emotions. Um, being open-minded and diplomatic. 
I'm just going to read what the book says because it's a very small page here. But it says, the Father of Cups has a truly unique and dynamic personality. He's the most feminine of all the fathers within the tarot and usually a patron of the arts. He's a dignified man who supports his family and community. The only thing holding this man back are his deeply rooted insecurities. They are vast and affect his personality in many unpredictable ways. So I think that's perfect because looking at Libra, it's all about balancing, balancing the, squ the scales, looking at justice. Um, if you are too much in the mind of judgment and you are blocked of the heart, right? If you're too much in logic and you're blocking out intuition, then, you know, you're, you're out of balance with your feminine. And so... I think we live very much in a patriarchal society where emotions are hidden and emotions are denied. Um, the workplace is, you know, no place for emotions. It's all professionalism. Um, at school, you know, kids have to keep it together and they cover up their emotional state. And But the truth is emotions, are, they serve a purpose. They are divine feminine energy that serve a purpose. And so with the equinox, if your emotions are coming up, <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? This whole episode. Oh, gosh. The synchronicities here. Look at the synchronicities. Um, but explore your emotional state and bring it into balance. Don't hide this is the emotional masculine energy, like I said, of the deck of all of the kings. It's having, um, just like I said, it's having that self-love and that self-acceptance for who you are and what you're feeling because you're, val you're valid. Your emotions are valid. Um, but you don't have to cause your own suffering with your emotions, with your denial of emotions. You can work through them and you can heal them and you can integrate them. Um, so with that, happy eclipse. <laughs> May the odds ever be in your favor. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. And there'll be more to come. Absolutely. Have a great rest of your day.